she kept saying, remember, remember, you're so loved, you're going to be welcomed, you're going to be loved everywhere you go, and we're always with you, we're always with you, we're going to protect you. So I think she said, remember this, and I said, okay, I will remember. And I and I woke up in a, in this tiny stiff body, in a baby's body, I guess. It was really stiff, it was very different from the state I was in because I was so free, I was this pure energy act. Hello and welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest today is Ake Muratova. She remembers her life before birth. Ake has profound, detailed pre-birth memories and also remembers why she chose to incarnate on earth. She has also experienced many mystical and out-of-body experiences. Ake, welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm really excited to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you, Louisa. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> Thanks for inviting Um, Well, I guess, first of all, I would absolutely love to hear about your pre-birth memories, pre-birth experiences. Awesome. Thank you so much for asking. Um, I've shared it uh, a year ago. And I think my life has drastically changed after that. Um, my previous memory came back to me when I was four, around four-ish. So my mom was visiting me um, with my little brother from the city. And I was living at the time in a small village. And I actually didn't even know that she was my mother because I would call her sister and I would call my grandparents, my mom and dad. So I actually didn't know who she was until she told me that she was my mom. Um, and she was breastfeeding my brother and I think at the time I was just looking how my brother was on her chest and just um, uh, her feeding um, breastfeeding him and then I just suddenly regained everything I the memory how I was um, being uh, how I was coming to earth and that was in a very black void almost like a black space I guess but at the same time I felt like I had no physical body and I was nobody at the same time I had no identity nothing like that I was just pure energy I guess you could describe it as that um, and only thing I was um, seeing was this bright white light at the end and it was coming closer to me it was moving closer to me, either me, it was me getting closer to that white light or the light was moving. I couldn't tell. It was just, you couldn't tell anything. But I remember just just waking up and asking a question, which was like, wait, where am I going? And what is happening? And I didn't know what was happening. And also, I didn't know that I could ask questions because I felt like it was so weird. Who am I? What's happening? What is it? And all of those things. And this, there was this gentle, I think it was a female voice because I felt like it was a feminine presence. Um, she was really gentle she, and she kept saying, you're going to Earth, you're going to planet Earth. And I, I was like, oh, awesome, Earth. And I felt like I should have known what that is, but I guess I couldn't remember again. And it was so frustrating because I was like, I think I know what she's talking about, but at the same time, I don't know. So I asked again, so what is Earth? And she said, it's a planet. It's your new home. And I was very excited. I was like, wow, that's so exciting. And then again, I felt like I needed to ask more questions. But because I was nothing and I felt like I had no idea of what, why, where, anything or what is even a question. So I didn't know what to ask further. And I got distracted by the white light because there were three figures, like humans, but I didn't know what they, who they were, what they were. And they were yelling and screaming. And I, I got distracted and I said, well, what's happening? Why, why are they yelling? What's happening? And she said, oh, they, they, they were screaming something like keys, keys, keys. And the energy I could feel how excited they were so I said what what is happening I want to know and she said that in their language 
they're saying a girl, a girl, a girl. So I was like, wow, awesome. What's a girl? And she started explaining to me the difference between a boy and a girl and how there are two genders on the planet and they have two different physical bodies and the power of the feminine body, a female body, which is a reproduction, which is um, life that we give life. We, uh, we are the ones that keep the life going on that planet. And, and again, the difference between the male body and the female body. And I was really, as she was describing, I was really happy about the female body because she said, you're going to be born as a girl. I was like, that's amazing. It's like a superpower. I can make babies. I, I'm going to be very, you know, feminine and this and that. So I felt, I kept saying so lovely. It's so lovely. Um, I felt like my character was like the, the, the state I was in is very pure and just very curious and excited, like a child almost. Um, anyway, so yeah, she said, you're going to be a girl. Um, and then the light kept getting closer and closer. I, I felt more and more sleepy as if I was in a trance, some sort of a trance. I was barely hearing her voice and she kept saying, it's time to go now. It's time to go. And I was like, I don't want to, I have more questions, but I kept forgetting what I wanted to ask. It was very frustrating. So I was getting closer and closer, but, um, I tried my best to not fall asleep, uh, but then she was in the background fading. Her voice was fading, but she kept saying, remember, remember, you're so loved. You're going to be welcomed. You're going to be loved everywhere you go. And we're always with you. We're always with you. We're going to protect you. So I think she said, remember this. And I said, okay, I will remember. And I, and I woke up in a, in this tiny stiff body, in a baby's body, I guess. It was really stiff. It was very different from the state I was in because I was so free. I was this pure energy. I could feel that uh, feminine voice vibrating through me when, whenever she spoke with me. I could feel the love and support. And now when I was back in, uh, when I was in this tiny baby's body, I, I felt disconnected. Um, I felt it felt heavy. It felt stiff. I couldn't control what I was doing. And I felt some emotion. Somebody was holding me and they uh, put me on my mother's chest. But I was freaking out. I was freaking out. I said, I don't like it. I don't like it. What's happening? What's happening? And as they put me on my mom's chest, I could hear her heartbeat. And I started calming down. And I I couldn't understand the language she was speaking in because I, I still couldn't understand the language. But then it felt like as it, it felt like a wave of energy through my body. And it felt like as if she said, I love you so much and I'm going to protect you. And at that moment, I was like, oh, wow, they were right. I am so loved. I am so happy. I am a girl. I am here. I'm here. And I fell asleep. So I was four and I told my mom at, when she was breastfeeding my brother, I, I think I yelled out. I was like, oh, my God, you are my mother. I remember the day I was born. Um, anyway, she she thought I was um, just being a kid. But then she was really happy when I said, like, oh, I remember. I remem remember being born. I remember that you're my mom. I know that you love me so much. Um, but, yeah, that's where I shared that. And growing up, I kind of never shared that with anybody because I thought like it was a normal thing at the same time. I don't know. I, I think um, when I was 23, around 22 or 23, I was discussing this with my friends and I said, oh, do you also remember like being born and, you know, choosing the body or anything like that? They were all like, no, we don't. So that's when I was like, oh, I guess that's not very common. Hmm. Wow. but I found more people <laughs> like me <laughs> yes you have and that that was so beautiful thank you so much for sharing that can I ask you a couple of questions about about that yes absolutely go for it um so do you think you had a, a choice to come to earth yes I think so yes and 
the reason I believe so is because I've had many multiple actually out of body experiences where I have been shown my life little life review like up till the moment I am like up till the age of was it 20 I was 23 24 so up till that age I was shown my life review and even when I said I want to go to earth I want to go to earth um and how excited I was like oh I want to go and help I want to go and help it sounds so good it's and we're gonna make it and I think that the I said something along the line of oh we've forgotten the we've forgotten that it's about fun I'm gonna tell them that it's about having <laughs> fun we've forgotten to have fun um I think that I said that and I um yeah and then I I, I kind of after that I felt a lot more peace with my being and with my existence on this planet I guess <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, started to have fun myself and I've been seeing a lot of changes within me and other people around me without me doing much actually um, but um, yeah I, 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 I was showing that and I when they were showing me I remembered everything and it was so quick it was so quick it was a very quick experience and when I came back to earth it was my human consciousness was just couldn't believe everything I was like what was that what was that and I started sharing with everyone to find the answers like what happened to me and because at the same at the time I didn't know anything about spirituality or much actually I wasn't a believer or I wasn't a believer in God or anything so to me um, I think I was really um, unprepared, but at the same time, I needed that. Mm. Yeah. And who do you, I mean, I'm talking in human terms, who who, who was that presence that was speaking to you, the, the female energy that you spoke about, that you were asking questions before you were mm-hmm. born in a physical form? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. I've never questioned who she was. Um, but I feel like um, I've had, oh well, I've had uh, one of these. This was one of my uh, recent, one of the recent out of body experiences where I was taken into a room with full of people. Um, it was just a very bright white room, and there were like um, a little ca- uh, couches everywhere, but people were standing, and they put me in the center. And I was sitting there and I, I was really, I was very conscious. I was, I knew that it was an astral realm. I knew that I'm, a, I'm still a human. Every, I knew everything. And, and um, the people there were standing, there were everybody I knew from earth, even like the, the customers I met or strangers I met on the street or a homeless man I used to talk to or like everybody I met in my life. They were all there and standing. I think about like probably more than 50, 50 people, yeah, I would say. And they were all standing and I was like, why are you guys like, I know that I'm in the astral realm, what's happening and why am I seeing you? Because you guys are all still on earth and why are we here? Why are we meeting here? And they said, oh, we are actually your guides and your ancestors. And I was like, there is no way because those people are actually still on earth. Like that guy is a homeless man. This guy is a baker. This guy, like there is no way. And they were like, we are using their faces so you can remember us when you wake up, Aki. And then that, in that moment, it made so much sense. And they were telling me that we have so many, um, so many ancestors and spirit guides guiding us. So it's never like one person, two people or like that it's always a group and always we have so much support so they kept telling me to tell other people that we have so much we're giving you so much support and it was actually a very fun experience um I and I think I asked at towards the end um I really wanted to know I think I said something like um so who's the main spirit guy or whatever like I sense all the time who's the one that I sense all the time I feel like I speak to one and um and everybody just pointed at this um lady with red hair she had red long hair and she stepped 
um, forward and she said, um, it's probably me because I talk to you all the time and we've we've had multiple uh, reincarnations and work together. And I said, oh, yes, I remember you. I remember your voice. So my best guess would be that it was her because it felt really nice and um, her presence was really angelic like the voice and every how she was talking to me was really familiar. I knew her, but at the same time, her face was um, uh, of a, someone I knew from earth, but um, her energy was different. So that um, I would say, yes, that was her. Again, I, I think there are, um, there are many guides and ancestors supporting us. So it doesn't really matter. I guess, but I'm I'm really grateful that she stepped up and she made sure that I could remember that I'm loved because um, when I had one of my out-of-body experiences, I was really, really proud of myself for remembering my pre-birth experience because it had to, it, it was supposed to play a big role in my life. So I was really proud of myself. I, rem I remember flying around earth and saying, I did it. I remembered. I told you I'm going to do it. And I was like, I woke up. Yes, I did it. And I was really, really excited. But um, again, yes, that's what happened. In short. Um, <laughs> I, I love how you explain it. So uh, spirit guides, yes, they're all around us, but they can also be represented in physical form as what we term as alive yeah. and humanness. Yeah, yeah. So angels yeah. or guides can come to us as a, a physical person as well to offer us mm -hmm. assistance. Exactly. Many people ask me how I can't I don't I don't hear anyone. How do I connect with my guides? I've tried everything. Mm -hmm. What what's your advice? Um, how do I connect is um being um in the present moment for me is the biggest, I would say, thing. So when we are in the present moment, when we are not thinking about the past, the future, worried or in our head, we are fully connected and aligned with our highest self because the current version of you now is your highest version of yourself, right? Um, the one that has grown a lot from everything. And so I think when you are in the present moment, that makes you so powerful that you are able to connect with your intuition, with your guides, anything that you want especially if you want to feel the love and connect with your own, um, um, with yourself and everybody in the present moment, if you do meditation and just feel that, try to feel that really, really um, integrate with that feeling, you'll connect with anything you want. And a lot of other things like um, I do before bed is asking a question. As I ask a question, I say, thank you. I, say good morning in the in the morning I say good morning to uh, to my guides to mom or whatever everything to good morning to the uh, to, to the world and say thank you I woke up today because you know I could not <laughs> but I still did so I'm, I'm I say thank you that I'm still going on this human journey and um, throughout the day if I have a question I ask in the morning please um, show me um, um, please guide me um, do, uh, for, for the interview I'm doing with Louisa today, uh, please help me to be more present and please help me to help other people and use my voice, um, which was given as a gift. And I'm grateful that I have a voice. Some people don't have a voice. Some people can't hear, but I was born fully healthy. And I say, thank you. And I trust, I trust. And they, they send signs, they send synchronicities. But not only them, I think the whole universe is actually you so you whatever you need you project through the universe i guess whatever you ask for you get in return um and i say good night i ask questions before bed show me in my dreams um if i have a question like i i think i'm struggling with my path but i'm really really open to exploring you know how much i love learning please show me in my dreams something that that I'm missing something that I need to see okay and I'll, I'll pick up on it I promise and I do that and they give signs um as long as you show I think um the the curiosity as long as you show that you are here to connect your open mind that you have an open heart you'll get 
the signs that you are looking for um, and even more, even more than that. And uh, not, I wouldn't say that to expect something miraculous to happen, like don't expect them to, to talk to you telepathically straight away because they send signs through people. Sometimes people, you have to be observant because sometimes people tell you things that you need to hear. People trigger some things in you to, in order for you to grow so you can see the signs, see the abundance, see what you are meant for. Um, but yeah, I would say meditate. There are a lot of, um, if you want to be more practical and you want to get a more a practical advices, I would say meditate. Um, uh, get clear about what you, why you want to connect with them, what you want to know. And also there are billions of videos and hypnosis access, um, accessible online. Uh, we live in a wonderful world right now. Everything is online. Um, and as long as you have an open mind, the hypnosis work, because every hypnosis is a self-hypnosis, so you can connect with your spirit guide, with your higher self to get the answers. Um, but on an everyday basis, I would just say you always have the access in the present moment. As long as you're open, you'll receive it through your intuition. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you mentioned before the your main guide, or as you said, it doesn't really matter who it was before birth, that you yeah. are that you are deeply loved and will always be with you. Many people feel yeah. lost and alone. Does everyone have guides? Yes. Yes. Everybody has guides. In fact, we've all been each other's guides. We've had so many reincarnations actually. Um we ended up that the actually the reincarnation we think about it, we think in a linear way like mm. in a human way but it's not like that but it's actually crazy uh the amount of lives we had and in in buddhism we in buddhism a lot of people say when you meet someone um we've had so many uh, lives together that we've probably been each other's mothers so you've probably been my mother louisa and <laughs> i've been your mother um and uh, same thing, um, we've probably been each other's guides while we were um, not um, on earth and just guiding each other. And even now here on earth, we're still guiding each other. And and, and I think, I, I well, I hope that people, I think once you open your heart space, which is the most important part, um, which is the most important channel. So once you open your heart space, you'll be able to feel the love, not from only beyond, but here as well on earth. Because the, the, the journey is about learning about love on earth, not waiting for, um, not just hoping that, oh no, somebody there in the heavens or somewhere loves me and that's enough. No, just learning to love everybody here and love yourself here and connect with everybody. But absolutely, we're always loved and supported and protected in every way it's possible. Um, we always have that intuition telling us, no, this is not right. This is not going to be harmful for you. The intuition and the, the voice of our spirit guides and the higher self is really gentle. So it's sometimes easy to miss. And we are very prone to listening to our ego's voice because mm -hmm. the ego is louder. Ego and easy louder. to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, we are all loved. Um, and I think the um it's easy to feel. Um that the actually the proof I think we um we are love. Actually, we are very loving beings, that's who we are. Um, and the proof that we need is I think. Um, when you love something, it evolves. When you love someone, you want to help them grow and evolve. When you love painting, you keep painting in and you keep improving your paintings. When you love music, you keep writing more music and exploring the genres. So when you love your creation, it evolves. So the humanity is still living. We are still, we are improving, we are evolving. I believe in it. And you can see a lot of good things. Um, and I think that's the proof that we are loving beings and we were created with love in our core, um, which is the proof that we need that we're still going, we're still evolving. And yeah, we are loved. 
and we were created with love. And when you love something, it lives on and on. It never dies. Mm. I, 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 I absolutely agree. And it really is what it's all about with love. But people people also talk about individual soul paths or soul purposes. Mm-hmm. And you did mention there was a reason mm-hmm. you remembered your pre-birth memories. Did Were you given an indi- yeah. indication of what your, it's a broad term, but your purpose or your path is aside from love, which it's all about in this life? Yeah. Yes, um, I was indeed. And I, um, I also want to mention that Yes, we do have our individual path, but it serves a, a very big role in a massive collective path as well. Um, but individual path for me, one thing they told me, because I kept asking, I want to do more. How can I help more? How can I do more in lo- like on earth? How can I help more people? How should I reach out to people? And they said, you don't do RQ, you just be. You have to be yourself. And sometimes we think that we can bring a change, we can make a change, forgetting that we are the change. When you start working on yourself, being yourself, loving yourself and uh, doing little things, you inspire others to be um, also themselves and inspire them to be safe in your presence, in your environment, so they can create safer environments. So it's like a ripple effect. But main thing they kept telling me is to have fun and just be yourself you've done so much Arky and at the time I was really in the dark so I felt like I haven't done much I don't I don't I think I barely lived a life um and uh, they showed me how many people and it goes towards everybody I think it goes to everybody they have they have shown me how many people I have made smile I've made them cry as well I made them angry and triggered and how many lives I have changed by little things I did in life. And it was really fast. It was like that. But uh, it was so um, fascinating. It was it was so exciting how I, I could feel the emotions of other people, my emotions in those moments, every, like the flashback. And they said, look at that, how much you've done. You've done so much and you're still going and just be yourself. And I think that's, that was my that was what I was told and and yeah I guess my purpose is just to keep learning live and learn and have fun and also um, along the way just tell people to have fun and and make sure that they are safe in my presence and sometimes we forget that the best present we can give to someone is being you know our presence um well, yeah, what an, what an inspiration you are and you when you when you say it only happened in a second or a moment as you mentioned in our humanness yeah. we have time we think of linear time yeah. but really there is yeah. no time do you think do you feel or sense that it's hard to to conceptualize but all these incarnations all happening now yeah if, if, um the thing is um i very hard to explain now um I don't really feel as much as I used to in the very beginning of my spiritual experience um like an awakening um I would call um it was in 2021 so I kept having astral projections and I kept experiencing my other lives and simultaneously traveling to other realms or higher realms angelic realms and um having those experiences and it was really amazing but at the same time um i was told to focus on human journey and just go back so i don't feel that as much connection as before but whenever um i'm really really focused because in the very uh, beginning of our awakening i must say we we um get we activate the spirit element and we get so um you know, we get so inspired and we get so dreamy and magical. Oh my God, life is magical and things like that. But over time, uh, over years, um, you will ground yourself and come back to the human experience and fully integrate with the world. Um, so that's what happened to me. And I don't feel as much uh, of those other experiences going on. And I don't astral project as much as I used to, but I do get pulled out of my body whenever there is a message or strong something I need to know like uh, someone passing away and they want to tell 
their loved ones, can can you tell them that I'm getting sick? I need I I need to go. Like tell them something, something like that. But it's not um like outer world like how can I say it? it's like and it's not extraordinary like before. It's more like earth related, like human experience related. If that explains. Um, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So. <laughs> With your astral projections, is it everyone has it in different ways? Is this when you're sleeping or when? Yes. Okay. So when you are um, asleep, um, your body falls asleep, but your consciousness still is awake. And then you can feel how you are separating from your physical body and you become this, you, your your astral body is really, well, I, 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 from my uh, observation, it's really white. Um, and you can feel the separation and go from there to places. Sometimes you'll be on different planes of existence. Um, some uh, Like you can be on the earth plane, which is mostly what we um, travel to when we are here. Um, and the earth plane is exactly the same as this planet, your room or wh wherever you are at. It's just it can have slight um, little slight differences like uh, your kitchen may be a little different but um and the thing that you will notice is well for me you know, on earth plane you are oftentimes very dizzy very uh confused like what's going on and but yet yeah, you can see and then you gain your consciousness and it's really easy for you to get scared but if you get scared, you attract like scary experiences. Like your energy matters. Mm. And, and in astral realm, you can feel that your energy matters so much because it manifests so quick. If you're scared, you'll get scary experience. If you're happy, you get happy experience. If you're at peace, peaceful experience. Same thing as on Earth, but it's on Earth, it's slower, I guess. But there, it's faster. Yeah, the manifestations take a lot longer. And can you um, yeah. astral travel at will when you choose to? Um, I can. Well, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you train to do this or it just happened to you? But, um, I, I Actually, I was able to do it since I was a kid. Um, but I've, I think at a certain age I stopped doing that and then I've completely forgotten about it. And then I remembered after the awakening, like, oh, I could do that before. I used to love doing this. I used to love going to bed as a kid because I grew up in a very, um, I would say, not a very good household for a kid. It was very, with a lot of violence at home. So it was my, my, my escape. I would rush to bed and close my eyes and astral travel and just go to different places and think of like a happy places. Um, but yeah, as um, as I started getting older, um, in the very beginning of my spiritual experience, as I mentioned before, you activate the spirit element and you get so excited that you don't want to be on earth anymore. You just feel this high, you get this honeymoon period, kind of a honeymoon period. Um, and I, I remember being very, very um, addicted to astral realms because I, I astral projections, I I guess, I guess I was abusing that skill uh, as if I wanted to escape this reality. Like, um, And in that moment, I've been told a few times on the astral realm by these beings that I I need to go back, that I, I am still on the mission. I still have a mission. I need to go back. So I stopped abusing it. And the more I started enjoying the human life and experience and learning about earth and people and our nature and where we're going, how we feel emotions, how we work, how we evolve, I kind of lost interest in the astral realm. Um, naturally, it just happened. But um, whenever I wanted to, I could go, yeah. Um, I just have to make sure that I'm not in a um, fearful state that I'm in a peaceful state and I can control my um, my state that if, if, if I am in a fearful state I go there it's I'm, I, it's not going to be very pleasant although nothing's going to happen I'm still going to come back but just not going to be pleasant and after that you don't actually want to go there so I just try to make sure that if I want to go I have a very good intention 
a very strong intention that I want to know something and that's something that is that can be useful, practical, helpful on earth and also that I'm in a good state of mind and I'm doing it for the good of all, for the good of everybody, not mm-hmm. only myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, my gosh, I almost, I just lost my train of thought for a minute. You, is, it's okay, it's okay. you mentioned, yes, it is all about love, but the question you probably receive as well, why are we here and is there an end point? of the reincarnation cycle? Why are we here? It's a good question. Um, I, would, I would think why not? <laughs> um, why not? Because um, when uh, I was in there, or it was like out there, out there probably is a better word, um, I was... All I could feel towards Earth was love. And when we are out there, our consciousness is completely different. It's very peaceful. It's very loving. And Earth seems like a very exciting experience. And um, it, is, it is very hard. Um, we know that. But at the same time, we have so much love for the planet, for the, the experience that we really want to go and evolve and expand because um, every experience we're having right now, likely you as a Louisa looking at me is a completely different perspective you having, which is unique to you. And the whole experience you're having as a human is so important and it's unique and it's special and it's expanding. And I'm looking at you and I'm expanding with you and I'm learning something from you right now, um, like uh, asking questions or uh, how to hold yourself during the interview or something like that. So I am expanding as well. And um, when we are there, it's so fun. Like, oh, my God, I've experienced this. I've expanded. I've learned this. And and, and it's like a never-ending expansion. It's never-ending. Like, as I said before, love is evolution. Love is expansion. So we love what we are doing here we love what we are creating here and as creators we come here to create something even more new even yeah something new that's why we forget that we are gonna play a game of a human being and we play it together because it's much more fun and we know that we're safe because we created it together we're doing it together um and there is a lot of things actually going on but there is um out there when you look um, because I was showing the earth there is a there is always a universal balance going on like even though there are like sufferings pain going on but then on the other side without the suffering and pain you don't know how beautiful joy and peace is love is like you learn that the other side of the pain is beautiful actually and it's worth it and you learn about compassion and it's a huge balance going on it's there is a huge system, actually. Um, yeah. But we, why are we here? To expand, to learn, to live, and also to have fun. That's what I've been told. And, yeah, so maybe we forget, but when we, are, uh, when we depart from this life, we remember instantly how, why are we here? And also that, oh, uh, even though maybe a lot of us have suffered and uh, experienced a lot of trauma and things like that you don't feel that out there you feel only love and you feel only um it will seem like a dream to you like the earth will seem like a dream to you because it felt like that to me because it was like oh that was so realistic it's like we have dreams every night don't we and actually I think that's the key like our dreams are telling us like we dream at night and we think it's so real and we wake up sweating, crying or being horrified, but we know, oh, it's just the dream. So it's just like that. I think it's, it was like, a, I think it was given to us so we remember that that's going to happen again. So just to keep in mind that we are actually dreaming right now. Um, but yeah, the, the answer would say just to love, expand more and learn together and create even more realities and more worlds and more experiences um yeah and have fun 
will we ever stop doing that? I don't think so. I think so. Uh, I think that we are evolving now and it's going to get easier. It's going to get um, more fun and less probably traumatic and uh, less uh, scary and hard um, the more we evolve. Because if you look at children that are coming right now, like uh, I, I talk to a lot of teenagers and if you talk to them, they're so passionate, they're so wise and already have so many spiritual insights. It's just natural to them. They don't even know much about like uh, anything in the world, but it's just very natural because they're they still they're still in the um, they still have that spirit element very active in them. So they're very connected and still aligned. So um, you can see how many um, changes are gonna happen just by looking at them. How you know how beautiful children are and everything in the world. Thank I don't you. think we'll ever stop coming here. No. Okay. Um, you did speak about we yes we take this reality me too so seriously but suffering and conflict and contrast it can be yeah. incredibly brutal. Um, yes. What's your advice to those that may be experiencing whatever degree of suffering? What would be my advice? I would say surrender. Sometimes um, suffering happens when you reject the pain, when you resist the pain, and when you just surrender. It might sound weird, but you surrender to the pain. You accept what's happening. And from there, you come back naturally to your present moment, to your natural state, which is acceptance and love. And it's like a compassion to yourself and you come back to that. And from there, you can create with your free will the ne- like the, the life that you want because actually the destiny, like the destiny we create is we create with our free will and our destiny also create, uh, creates free will. So free will creates destiny. Destiny creates free will. It's, con- it's a connected thing. Um, I would say to surrender to wherever wherever you are at and know that you are exactly in the moment that you're supposed to be in. And whatever you're going through, actually, it's meant for you as a good lesson. I know sometimes we go through something that is heavy and traumatic and sometimes we feel shame to share those things. But your life experience matters and your life experience makes you the expert in your life experience and through that you can share and help other people and i know in this society it's easy to think i i am self 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 development self independence or whatever you know things like that but um with itself it also i would say um we, no matter how disconnected it seems like we are all connected don't be afraid to be vulnerable and also if you're suffering the bravest thing that you can do is ask for help say i'm not okay i need help i need someone i'm not okay i don't know what to do ask for help whether it's the spirit or the humans it's the bravest thing that you can do Oh, beautiful, beautiful advice. I've got one more question. <laughs> what it, in your experiences, or what what do you think happens when we die? When we leave, when our physical body dies, you will get back to the source, which is who you are. The the the. I think you become everything. If if that makes sense we are actually everything and um, nothing at the same time. So it's weird, but uh, you become everything. You, you get, 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 go back to you as a creator, us as a creator together. And um, that's what will happen, uh, I think. Well, for me, it was me remembering that we are us and that we've created this world and and then and, and I felt really, really grateful for the human experience I had and I was really happy. And I think every single one of us is gonna look back and say and think, Oh my god, I was I was Louisa with curly hair. Oh, I was Charlie with bald head and I was this and that and it was gonna be so much fun to look back on. Um, but not only human experience, we've had so many other experiences on other realms and planets. So it's just 
it, it is um, something I guess we can just um, now um, we can we can uh, talk about or we can guess we can wonder but we can't tell what is gonna happen for sure but from uh, what I've experienced and from what other uh, people have experienced from their near-death experiences we can uh, put the puzzle pieces together and just get a um, little taste of it and see that it's going to be actually very nice and peaceful and it's worth it. It This human experience is worth it. And while we're here, I guess, just focus on the fact that we're here and leave that for later, you know, the surprise yeah. for later and just enjoy Excellent advice. Aki, if people would like to connect with you, where's the best place for them to reach you? Um, I've got, and uh, thank you, uh, I've got a website, it's Arki Murata, which is basically my name, arkimuratova.com, and I've got a YouTube channel, which is Divine Insight, and uh, yeah, you can con contact me from there. I, I will leave a link below in the show notes as well. Um, on a final okay. note, is there anything you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you? Um, well, what can I share? I would say thank you uh, once again for inviting me. I feel really, truly honoured. Um, I haven't done these interviews in a year or so, so I've been really nervous. I hope that all of us believe in miracles and wonderful things in the world and learn to accept um, the things that go, that happen in the world and just make sure to balance and stay um stay in that balance and just i guess the main thing i would say to people to, to people to focus on is self love um and with self love and self discovery i think opening your heart to other people and you will see that we are actually not very different <laughs> we may have different life experiences but the lessons are almost the same and we're very connected and um, we love each other on a deeply level, even though sometimes we may hurt each other and say, say, say some things, but none of us mean that. We are just protecting ourselves in the best ways we know. So things happen, but we are teaching things um, one another. And there is a huge impact that we don't know about uh, we have on the world and uh, on people around us. So I would say love yourself, love your neighbor <laughs> and love everybody around you and learn to be more compassionate to yourself because it's your first life as a human being and you've, I mean, we've probably had many lives, but again, we can't prove it. So I guess just focus on this life as the first life and keep going and be proud about being a beginner in life and make mistakes learn again and yeah just be a beginner in life and be proud of it yay that was so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> right, what a great way to end the show Aki thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest really you're you're a bundle of joy and a bright such a bright light <laughs> and so wise for your young years <laughs> Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> if you liked this episode, please do subscribe.